Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to the very last installment of the Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination videos. This is because Scorch Timber, the very last colour, has now been released and I can now give you a couple of colour combinations with it and we are going to compare it to the other colours that are in the range around the browns. So, the first thing we're going to do, of course, is ink blend this onto a piece of white cardstock and see what it really looks like. Now, everything I'm using, as always, is linked down in the description below for you and if you want to purchase this colour, you'll also find a link to that too. So let's start by just taking this colour to the cardstock, blending it in circles and you can see already, so this is a dark brown, is a dark brown. To me it's quite a cool brown as well and it kind of has a hint of grey to it. Now that may just be like the oxide element of it but it's a really lovely colour. Look at that, it just reminds, it actually reminds me of coffee. Um, really really lovely so let's just wipe my mat and let's see where this one stands now when we look at the label we've actually got quite a true likeness I'd say if anything the label is maybe ever so slightly warmer than how it's blended on my cardstock but of course different cardstocks will give you slightly different effects and then when we look at the ink pad of course that is much darker but what we found in the past in some of the other videos is that the ink pad or the label are wildly different from what actually blends so it's interesting to see this is really quite close so then, this is the bit I know I'm really excited to see because I haven't done this yet. I'm going to see where it sits along with the other browns. So let's take my colour chart. Now this colour chart that I'm using here is available for you to download. At the moment I haven't yet updated it with the additional colour, but it is coming. It will not be long at all. So literally a few days that will all be updated for you to download. Again, the link is down below for you. So save that link, pop along, find all the downloads. Now this not only includes this colour chart, but I also have downloads for things like the labels that you can see here. Now they are all, as I say, completely free and I will be updating them with the new colour very, very soon. So, now the first thing that springs to mind is ground espresso, but as we hold the two together you can see really how much kind of cooler the scorched timber is compared to ground espresso. That definitely has a warmer tone to it, doesn't it? Um, coming along to, uh, well, gathered twigs, I suppose gathered twigs isn't too dissimilar. I would say walnut stain is probably quite close as well, but definitely scorched timber, it almost to me has a hint of green in it, just ever so slightly, giving it that much cooler tone. Now one thing I will just show you as well, because black soot is not, in my opinion, a black, it's more of a charcoal colour, so you can see how much lighter that is than black soot there. So it is quite a few shades lighter. But this is going to be really perfect if you want that sort of scorched edge, burn edge effect to your papers. So now let's take a look at some colour combinations using Scorch Timber. The first one I'm going to do brings in peeled paint because I'm taking advantage of the fact that I really think there's a little bit of a green undertone in there. So we're going to go into peeled paint first of all. and I'm going to pop that down in the middle. So just going to blend this first of all into the centre of my strip. I'm not going to think about even blending that into the scorched timber just yet. I'm laying it down, first of all, in the solid area, lightening the pressure to blend it out a little bit at the top here, ready for when I add that third colour. And now, without ed adding any more to my brush, I'm going to work in small circles along this line here. Now, I'd like to bring the scorched timber up a little bit more, so I'm just going to do this until I don't think I'm actually transferring any more. In the first instance, I'm going to come in with anything that might be left on my brush. Always start by putting my brush down in the solid area. That way I don't get any nasty surprises if there is more ink on there than I expect. And then again, small circles and blend this upwards. And I can see there I'm getting a really lovely blend line between the two. It's just faded perfectly between those. That is gorgeous, I love that. Okay, so just popping that to the side, just going to clean up my mat. So water and a bit of kitchen towel is plenty. 
And then the third colour I'm going to introduce is Saltwater Taffy. So bringing it into the pink, just for a little bit of difference. But I think between these two, we tend to get quite a, a nice brown anyway. So I think that will work nicely with the sort of tones that we're going here with here. So just again, working on the solid area first. Bringing it up to that line. I'm not thinking about blending just yet until I'm happy with the solid area. And then once again, come back to my brush that's got the green on. Now I did use most of this green going into the Scorched Timber, so I don't think there's a lot left on the brush, but do you know what? It looks like there might be enough. You see that nice almost yellow tone we get for going through the two. I think I'm going to add a little, just a tiny little bit more. Again, go down into the solid area and gently in circles push that up into the saltwater taffy and then the same the opposite way with a little more saltwater taffy on there. Perfect. Look at that. That's just gorgeous. If you want something really quite botanical, that is going to be perfect for springtime. It kind of reminds me of the soil, the plants, the foliage, and then the buds and the flowers on top. So gorgeous, I love that. Okay, so let's do another color combination. Now this time I'm going to go much warmer and I'm going to bring in reds, oranges, yellows, and put brown on the end. I love this for things like Halloween. I love this if you want something really warming and autumnal. So we'll see how this looks with the Scorched Timber. Bearing in mind that Scorched Timber does seem to have um, quite a cool tone to it. So it may not work as well as we've just seen here with the green. I'm going to start off with the lighter shade though. I tend to like to start with the lighter and work my way to the darker rather than vice versa. Um, I didn't do so in the last blend because I'd already swatched that brown for you, so I continued in that direction. So first of all, mustard seed, a really bright yellow. Be interesting to see against the warms and the cools how or if this brown looks any different too. Then going into the orange, I don't want to push up too far actually up here. So let's bring that orange down into the yellow a little bit more because I do have four colours to fit onto this strip. There we go, backtracking with what's left on my brush again. It's kind of probably my top tip for ink blending is to not always add more ink onto your brush and really utilise what's already on there. Let's just give this a freshen up so we don't get yellow into the red which is going on next. And so I've got mustard seed, spiced marmalade, and then barn door, a bright, bright yellow, kind of what I'd call fire engine yellow here. Again, just fade that off a little and then down towards the orange, always working in circles so you capture every angle of the grain of the paper. Then back to the orange, so fresh orange on here now and going directly onto the solid part of the orange rather than trying to go onto this blend line. I definitely didn't have enough orange down there so I have added more to my brush. So I'm not just blending here, I'm actually adding colour too. There we go, pushing that up into the red. I think that's pretty perfect there. And then lastly, again, remove this excess colour just with a bit of cloth. And this is a dampened cloth, but it's not so damp that it's going to leave water residue on my blending mat. And then lastly, that scorched timber on the end. So let's just turn this round and pop this just on. Oh, it really does just look like charred wood. It's, I know that's the name of it, but it is such a perfect colour, such a perfect name for the colour. It really is. Right, so I don't want to bring the Scorched Timber down too far. As with any browns, I like to just use them as the very tip of a colour combination, just on the very end there. So I'm not looking to go too heavy with it. I think that's perfect. Look at that, so beautiful. Now whether you have it 
either way isn't that just gorgeous and you know what I think that brown has worked equally as well into the cool as it did into the warm colours so let's take a look at both of these there we go so there's your first look at scorched timber let me know in the comments what you think about this color will you be purchasing it like i say there's links for everything down below and if you've not seen the color combination playlist where i've done this sort of video for every single one of the distress oxide colors i believe there's now 72 of them you'll find them all on this playlist here listed alphabetically so you can pick out your favorites or any of your new colors that you want to explore and i'd love it if you you could also subscribe to my channel. Take care everybody, I'll see you again soon.